is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video tonight i have your wrestlemania night one full review for you guys obviously this year's wrestlemania is a lot different than any other wrestlemania we have ever seen due to the pandemic that has hit the world at this moment you know everybody coming together as wrestling fans as wwe fans coming together for wrestlemania this year it just has it's just so different man it's so crazy you know what makes wrestlemania wrestlemania is the stage and the arena and the crowd mostly and you know the the moments that we all just are indulged in all at once as a unit and uh, you know just just wrestling fans in general tuning in watching live there reacting to the action and stuff and this year we don't have a crowd you know we don't have a big arena we don't have a big stage and epic moments and all this stuff but that does not mean that you know the show can't be enjoyable this year we have a two night event we have night one which was tonight and then we have night two which is tomorrow night I am going to review both here on the channel for you guys and you know what, coming into this, I don't think I knew the matches for either night, but um, hopefully WWE can put together a great show for us in the midst of everything going on in the world right now, man. So we're just going to dive into this show, and hopefully they give it to us. And, in, in, you know, there's a lot of matches on this card that I wasn't really looking forward to. There's probably about six or seven out of the 16 that I was kind of wanting to see or looking forward to a lot. So hopefully, you know, the rest of the card can live up, and maybe they put together a banger show, guys. But let's all tune in together. I'm going to review the show, letting you guys know what happens at the show, how I felt coming into the matches, what happened at the event, the attires, anything special that took place, what I thought of the matches, and everything in between. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into WrestleMania 36 Night 1 and break down the review of the show. All right, guys, so night one did kick off with our kickoff show. The first matchup taking place this WrestleMania weekend was Cesaro taking on Drew Gulak, obviously. This is the tie between Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn's Intercontinental Championship feud. Gulak being over in Bryan's corner and Cesaro being over in Zayn's corner. And this matchup, you know, starting it off, it was a bit hard to get used to. I didn't know, even at this moment right now, reacting to the matchup, I don't know if Michael Cole is going to be alone on commentary all night. But it's very weird because there's no crowd noise, you know, and it's just like the weekly show. But I feel like it's even worse because there's more wrestling in-ring action. Michael Cole's kind of, you know, filling in the dead space with, you know, added commentary. And while he is good at his job as far as, you know, filling in and doing things on the fly, I will say, you know, we all hate on him for being kind of robotic and stuff like that sometimes and over exaggerant at times and, you know, boss time and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, I don't know. It's a bit weird. It's kind of like watching a video game with the crowd noise turned off. And it was just like, what a move by... Drew Gulak, and you know, like, suplex by Cesaro, and just kind of really, I don't know, it's kind of hard, hard to say, but anyways, there was some good ground and pound right here, you know, Drew Gulak, Gulak trying to lock in submission after submission, but, you know, overall, really hard to get into the match at first, but these guys did pull together a, a decent little game, nothing too out of the out of the woodworks, but it was cool to see these two guys tie up, because I know their, their wrestling backgrounds and stuff like that, so it was cool to see, but Cesaro does pick up the victory, and would this tie into the Intercontinental Champion? match later on we shall see but Cesaro does win the first matchup on night one of Wrestlemania 36. So the main show kicked off with the Women's Tag Team Championship match between the Kabuki Warriors, terrible tag team name, and Asuka and Kyrie Sane taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, who of which I cannot stand as a team, man. I just don't buy it. You know, Nikki Cross looking at her from NXT. I say this every time they're on screen. We're, we're over it. I'm not over it. I still don't like them as a team. But in this matchup, you know, uh, I would have opened with something different. You know, I felt like a lot of people weren't looking forward to this matchup. And, you know, the Women's Tag Team Championships have been treated like trash ever since conception of the titles, which they should have never been made in the first place, but that's a whole nother rant right there in itself. But I thought every woman in this match really did bring it. You know, it wasn't my favorite match. It wasn't a bad match, though. You know, the, the intensity was there. I, I could buy into what they were trying to sell me. It seemed like all four women were involved in the matchup. They were going hard. They were bringing it. You know, we didn't have the little pussyfoot kicks and stuff like that. These ladies actually brought it to us. And Kyrie Sane and Asuka just thrived, man. That empty arena, man, they were killing it. I love, you know, the intensity, the, the the, the mockery and everything like that. Their charisma was shining through. They looked great. They should have retained here, but Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross do get the victory. You know, it was a pretty intense matchup. I thought it was pretty hard hitting for what it was at times. And Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are your new women's tag team champions. I don't agree with this, but you know what, man? That's what happened. We had our first title change in the first matchup of the opener. I also want to add in, before this, we had Rob Gronkowski as our host with Mojo Rawley, and it was god-awful. Rob Gronkowski is 
this host is god awful. I did not want him in WWE. Now I, I can confirm it, Brad. I, I do not like this man at all. I appreciated what he did in the football field. I'm a huge football fan. I think he's a fantastic tight end. I think he's a Hall of Famer, no doubt, in the NFL. God awful host as WrestleMania. Dreadful, embarrassing to watch. I don't like his voice. Just not good stuff. So I guess they were trying to knock out the matches that I didn't give a flying damn about early on, guys, here on night one. Elias taking on Trash Corbin in match number two of the main show. And a matchup that I did not care for. This is not WrestleMania quality to me. You guys know that Trash Corbin is my least favorite talent in the world. So Elias going one-on-one -on -one with, with him is just not good. You know, any match with Corbin probably wouldn't be good, you know, or, or something I'd like to see. Um, I feel like Corbin would be best in like a, like if they would remove the money in the bank, you know, uh, you know, stipulation pay-per-view put that back on the wrestlemania card that is a perfect match for corbin to be in and just lose every year that's that's perfect for him i did think however you know trash corbin coming in and taking out elias kicking him off the balcony that was really sick during that concert at the performance center during friday night smackdown i thought that was a really excellent way to build some heat right there however you know this matchup it wasn't bad again the guys brought it it just it just wasn't anything special it wasn't anything it, it wasn't a good match or anything like that but you know elias does roll up Corbin at the end. Corbin tried to roll up Elias, and then Elias rolled up Corbin, and then Elias is the winner here, defeating Trash Corbin, and Trash Corbin has been defeated by Elias, and that was pretty much it. I feel like this match should not have been on WrestleMania. It was it's pretty much just a waste of time, to be honest with you. And this this matchup added nothing to the card, and it, it is what it is, man. Something else I wanted to add real quick, though, is I feel like, if I didn't say it in the last segment, I felt like the, the show should have opened to kick off this two-night weekend, guys. We should have had a banger to open the show. It should have been freaking balls to the wall. Send out Rollins and Owens or something like that and get these guys freaking going here on night one. But nonetheless, you know, here we are and Elias does defeat Trash. Next up, guys, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Becky Lynch taking on Shayna Baszler. If you guys know how I feel about Shayna Baszler, not a big fan. She's just very boring to me, man. Like, her matches, you know, I, I feel like she's like the female equivalent of Trash Corbin coming in. I like Becky a lot. You know, she's had a dominant title reign. My God, she's ran through everyone. And you know what, Brett? She, she continues that domination. She destroys Shayna Baszler. She doesn't destroy her. That was... That was over-exaggerating there. But she does defeat Shayna Baszler in sort of a... It was kind of... It reminded me a lot of the triple threat from the main event of WrestleMania 35. It was like, you know, it is what it is. You know, nothing too crazy, crazy. I think the triple threat was actually better than that match. This match was nothing too special at all. And it just kind of ended out of nowhere. You know where you kind of are into the match and you look away for a second and you look up and it's over. It's three count just like that. That's kind of how this match was, man. Not, not anything special. Like, to this point, man, WrestleMania was really bumming me out, man. Like, nothing thing too outstanding like it, it literally felt like I was just watching a live event or I was watching like a regular episode of Raw or something but I am totally surprised by this outcome I did not see this at all you know Shayna Baszler Shayna's built up at the Rumble I think she eliminated like seven eight people something like that goes in the elimination chamber single-handedly destroys every competitor in that matchup the entire women's division put on notice and then Becky Lynch defeats her here on like a weird like I don't even I don't even know man I like missed it I just looked up it was just like in the blink of an eye I was eating some food and I about choked on my freaking food, man. I didn't expect this result at all. I really don't know where we go from here. Maybe Ronda Rousey is set to challenge Becky next. Maybe that's what they're setting up. Coming full circle. I don't know. But I was completely shocked by this result. And I don't know how a live crowd would have taken it. But I would have loved to have seen that take place. But to be honest with you, I, I, while I don't really cr agree creatively, I do agree in the fact that, you know, as a fan of Lynch and not a fan of Baszler, there you go. But anyways, man, still your Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. Next up, guys, we have the Intercontinental Championship match between Sami Zayn defending the IC title versus Daniel Bryan. Obviously, Gulak, Cesaro, and Shinsuke Nakamura in their respective corners for this match. I still really want to see Daniel Bryan and Gulak team up to go after the Tag Team Championships. I think that would be absolutely fantastic, especially once we get the crowds back and everything like that in the months to come. I think that that would be superb to watch. But just another match, man. I think this was very intense. I think it was hard-hitting. I still just... Nothing memorable stands out besides Daniel Bryan. Like, he did a great suicide dive, man. He went to the outside so damn hard. He rode the body of Sami Zayn into the barricade. It was very sick. Uh, we had some good intent. You know, it's Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn, so of course they're going to bring it. They always bring the intensity. They were hard-hitting and physical, and it was really enjoyable from that point of, you know, perspective. But without a crowd and everything, man, it's just, it's just weird. I, I really don't know. It just feels bleh, I guess. Kind of like the, what the world is right now. It just feels like there's just a big rain cloud 
out over this show or something, if that makes any sense to you. But overall, this matchup uh, just kind of ended out of nowhere again. It's like you can't tell the flow of a match, I guess. It's just like it just ends, man. Th these matches don't really have endings. It's just like out of nowhere, and I really don't know what to even describe it as. But uh, Daniel Bryan comes off the top rope. I think he was going for a shotgun drop kick or a diving headbutt. And Sami Zayn catches him with a haluva kick, which was a pretty cool, you know, move. I didn't think it put him away, but it did. It put away Daniel Bryan, and Sami Zayn retains the Intercontinental Championship. Another match where it's just like, yeah, I mean, whatever. I, 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 that's all you can really say. It's just meh. So, Sami Zayn is still your IC champion in what I thought would be a pretty good football game. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't anything memorable. Next up, guys, we have the triple threat tag team ladder match between Miz and Morrison, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Kofi Kingston and the New Day, and, of course, the Usos thrown in the mix. Now, when I first saw this matchup, you know, I thought it was going to be, you know, that, it, what, what it was announced, you know, triple threat tag team ladder match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. However, I think the Miz was either sick. I don't think he had the virus or anything, but I think he may have just been sick, or I don't know what the whole deal was with that, but they changed it to a triple threat ladder match for the Tag Team Championships. Championships. And this match is easily, hands down, the best match of the night. If you guys missed this matchup, you definitely need to go check it out. These three men put their damn bodies on the line in front of no one in that damn arena, and they tore the freaking house down. I think they did a fantastic job. You know, uh, just a lot of great athleticism, a lot of great spots, and just a great flow of the match, and, uh, you know, a lot of on-edge moments. It just, just a really good gym, man. Like, hats off to John Morrison, Jimmy Uso, and Kofi Kingston, man. I was thoroughly entertained the whole entire match. These guys put on a clinic and I enjoyed it very much. The end of the matchup actually came when all three men were at the top of the ladder battling for the tag titles. All three of them had their hands on the little ring that you get the ta titles off of. The little uh, holder thing or whatever the hell you want to call that. The latch. And and then Kofi and Jimmy headbutt Morrison and he pulls the tag titles down with him and so Miz and Morrison do retain the SmackDown tag titles. What a great match man. Just such good stuff in this thing. You saw so many cool flips and tricks and cool spots, man. I cannot recommend this match enough. I think all three did great. I love Kofi's hair. I love that he had the coloring book attire on, but not all of it was full just yet. I thought that was great. Um, just, just fantastic, man. Great stuff. I hate that all three, you know, all three weren't full teams here, but uh, they, they put in work and they did their jobs. I think they did a fantastic job. And to this point, this was hands down the best match of the night. I freaking loved this match. For what we got, man, I can't imagine having a crowd watch it live there. Good stuff, bro. Next up, guys, we had two of my favorite talents in the entire world, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. Two of my favorite wrestlers in the entire world right here going head-to-head. -head. If you guys follow the channel, you know how much I love both of these men so very much. I'd say Kevin Owens is higher up than Seth Rollins, but not by, you know, just an astronomical number. But these two men coming in, man, I was looking forward to this match a lot. You know, I, I saw around Twitter, I saw around the community, a lot of people were sleeping on this match, you know. They felt that it may not have been WrestleMania quality, but these men came in this ring, bro, and they brought it, dude. This this was so excellent. Two great workers in the ring just putting on a clinic, dude. I, I was so impressed with this match. But before we get into more details of this match, guys, Seth Rollins in the all-white Monday Night Messiah gear. Absolute fire. I had so many people tweeting at me and, you know, mentioning me on Instagram and Twitter. Shout out to all of you guys, man. I love when you guys do that and you think of me during moments like that. You guys know that white's my favorite color and Seth Rollins being one of my favorite wrestlers and rocking the white gear, I always talk about him wearing the SummerSlam 2015 gear, so bringing it back here in a different form was excellent, man. I popped hard for that, but these two guys just beat the hell out of each other, man. Lots of great back and forth, great moments back and forth in this matchup. Apron spots, Falcon Arrow on the apron. I mean, dude, these dudes were beating the hell out of them. I really wanted to see a curb stomp attempt into a pop-up powerbomb like he, you know, pushes off like WrestleMania 31, but then KO catches him and power bombs him. We did not get that in this match. However, we did get some other things. Later on in the matchup, guys, KO and Seth Rollins make their way to the outside. Seth Rollins hits him in the face with a ring bell. I miss ring bell shots, man. We haven't seen one of those in forever in WWE, it seems like. So the ref rings the bell, disqualified. Kevin Owens wins due to, to, due to disqualification. Seth Rollins makes his way up the ramp. KO gets on the microphone, calls Seth out, says, you're just a little bitch. You're not, you know, you're not a god. You're not nothing like this. Seth Rollins comes back. They restart the match. No disqualifications. And these two go at it some more. We had some wicked chair shots. You know, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins mouthing off to 
each other. Great intensity. Kevin Owens hits Seth in the face with the bell, lays him on the announce table, makes his way up onto the WrestleMania sign right behind the commentary table, and he jumps off the WrestleMania 36 sign, looking like the MDT Extreme Division out here. Excellent stuff. He does a senton off that thing, go, crashes through Rollins, through the announce table, rolls Rollins back in the ring, hits him with the stunner. One, two, three. My boy KO picks up the win, and it was it was great, man. I don't know which match I liked more, this one or the triple threat ladder match, but both of these matches really lifted up the card a lot. You know, overall, as a show thus far, it's been crappy. You know, it's been bled. It's not been very good, but these two last matches, man, really lifted my spirit, really got me engaged, and you didn't even realize that a crowd wasn't there. That's how good these last two matches were, which means that any other match has the ability to if you bring the work. And I was proud to see this, man. KO gets the victory. Rollins rocked the white gear. Great shit, man, overall. KO gets the win over Rollins. Can't wait to see where we go from here. Next up, guys, we have the Blue Universal Championship match between Goldberg defending against Braun Strowman in place of Roman Reigns, who obviously had this matchup, and neither man really earned it. Roman Reigns just coming out, announcing he was the number one contender. Braun Strowman then replacing him with no logic gap. Other than, we obviously know Roman Reigns pulled out of the show due to him, you know, not feeling confident in competing here with his weak immune system, which I totally understand him, and I totally commend him for that and doing the right thing for him and his family and protecting himself here. So Braun Strowman stepping in here would he claim the blue universal championship yes he would yes he would he he would step right in uh we had like three or four spears attempted jackhammer uh kick out of there he got out of the jackhammer he went for four power slams one two three goldberg loses the universal championship and braun Strowman, after a four or five year you know race for that blue universal championship he finally gets his hands on it defeats goldberg and i don't really know man i mean good god i, I this was a this was pick your poison and this was pick the shiniest turd in this match because Jan Strowman, man, I, I just can't get behind him. After, you know, he was so red hot three, four years ago, the ship has sailed, man. He should have won the Universal Championship three years ago when he took on Brock at No Mercy. He took on Samoa Joe and Brock in that one match, I do believe, or something like that at Great Balls of Fire, or maybe I'm mis mistaken or something. And, and with that Fatal 4-Way at SummerSlam, whatever the hell it was, he should have won it there, did not win it there, and uh, just it, the, the ship has sailed for me, you know. He, he knocks over big things. He gets in the celebrity matches. I just am not, I'm not a fan of what he does anymore. Like, I think he's a solid, like, he can he can be entertaining. He can knock shit over. He can do things. He's great for the kids and stuff like that. I think he's a freak of nature. I think, you know, everything like that. But as much as I have talked throughout this review right here on this matchup, the match has already ended and he already won the, the, won the title. So, I don't know, man. Let's just get this shit done. You know, hopefully WWE takes a break following WrestleMania because uh, we just need a hard reset reset, man. They need a hard reset. Get some new feuds, fresh faces. Let's get these arenas full, man. Let's just get on with it. You know, I'm just sick of this. Goldberg's no longer champion. Get him out of there. Don't let him return. He should retire now. Braun Strowman can go on, lose the title to Roman. Whatever the hell they want to do, just just get it out of my face. But this matchup was quick, and, and, and it is what it is. And for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Boneyard match between The Undertaker and AJ Styles. I honestly did not know what to expect out of this match. I thought coming in it would be like a Buried Alive match. You know, we had a little bit of details coming in, and holy shit, man, what, what a just fun ride, man. I, I think that this was the perfect way to end the show. I think that this match saved Saturday night as a whole because this match, the ladder match, and Kevin Owens versus Rollins completely, you know, was completely different side of the coin, man. These three matches were very fun, very entertaining, engaging throughout. Compared to the rest of the card was just kind of garbage, you know? Just just very quick, nothing meaningful, no, nothing really mattered. But these other three matches, including this Boneyard match, man, this Boneyard match, you know what? Get 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 him out of here. We gotta put the right guy in here, right? We gotta get the American badass taker who comes to the cemetery, man. This was so e excellent. It was shot just like, sort of like a Hardy compound or a Matt Hardy segment in, uh, in WWE we broken Matt Hardy right here. Filmed at a cemetery. Really badass by AJ Styles. Uh, what we think is Undertaker arriving in a hearse is uh, these druids unload this casket from the back of a hearse and AJ Styles pops out and it's playing Undertaker's music but then he pops out of the casket and he laughs and he's like ah ha ha. 
and it plays his music and you know he totally swerved everybody I thought that was brilliant the back and forth between AJ and Taker Taker pulls up on the motorcycle and you know they're they're engaging each other you know they're talking back and forth talking shit to each other and just overall this thing was shot beautifully it looked like a movie you know it looked like WWE films out here I'm sure that's who produced it anyways but the only thing I really didn't like about it is I guess that Undertaker like Undertaker I feel like talked too much which I guess he is the humanized form of himself you know he's the American badass so he's not all the way you know he's not dead man Undertaker so I guess that makes sense but I don't know that's just if I had to nitpick that would be my only nitpick but Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson get involved. They brought some druids into this thing trying to fight off Taker. Taker fights them all off. AJ Styles, you know, has him at one point. I mean, they throw him onto the, the hood of the hearse into the windshield. They break some, some tombstones over each other. They fight on top of a roof. I mean, they, this the match had everything, man. He throws them off the roof. They're talking shit. I mean, there was some great storytelling in this thing. You know, AJ Styles calling him washed up. He puts Undertaker in the grave. We think it's over. AJ Styles gets inside of the, uh, the bulldozer right there trying to dump the dirt on top of Taker, but Taker reappears behind him and takes out Styles, buries him alive. You get the freaking, the, the gloved hand of AJ Styles sticking up out of the grave. I thought that was an excellent shot. This was just so fun, man. I had so much fun with it. it. It just brought me back to being a kid again, and it was just so fun to see American Badass Taker and AJ Styles in there. I, I, I don't know, man. Just really fun. It was just a fun match. I don't know really what to say. I thought it was great. I was laughing. It entertained me. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was goofy at times, but overall, freaking great. Great. Had a lot of fun with it, and you know what? If, if, if anything, man, the, those three matches on this card really lifted up night one. But that was our entire night one. Undertaker does bury AJ Styles alive, and he rides off into the sunset. Actually, I should say the darkness. He rides off into the darkness. The Taker logo appears on the barn behind him in like a freaking laser shot. You had fire you know, blowing off behind him. Taker lifts up the fist. It was just so excellent. I can't say enough good things about this, man. I would love to know your guys' thoughts down below, but that does it for your night one review of WrestleMania 36. Let me know what you think. Overall, as a whole, I think it was a downer. If you if you include all the matches before, you know, Rollins and the, and the ladder match, I, literally the only three good things I can say about the show is the KO match, the KO Rollins match, the triple threat ladder match, and this Boneyard match were excellent. The rest of the card was just, you, you didn't miss a John Brown thing. Just very, just blah and boring and just not good. But overall, night one, like I said, outside those three matches, I, I couldn't find a good thing. But I I'm excited for night two, man. Ending off with this Boneyard match, I'm excited to see what we got with the Firefly Funhouse match. I think John Cena and Bray Wyatt are going to have a time now. I cannot wait to see how they shot that thing. I'm sure it'll be very, very similar. Edge and Randy Orton. We got Brock and Drew. I mean, we got some good shit coming tomorrow night as well. But that's going to do for your WrestleMania 36 Night 1 review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts on Night 1 down below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. I don't think I missed anything. I tried to cover it the best I could, but I enjoyed it overall as far as those three matches. The first half was crap. Second half, I, I picked it up greatly. It entertained the shit out of me. But thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.